Yes, everyone is in. Good evening. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Monday, April 17th, 2023 Select Board, Berlin Select Board to order. Uh, with us tonight to my left is Paul Smith and Joe Stahl. To my right are Tor Nelson, David Sawyer. I'm Brad Town. With us also are the town administrator Vince Connie, town treasurer Diane Isabel, and town clerk Richard Drew. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? Yes. We have uh, the additional approval of the warning for the special election that uh, Richard will present tonight. And we have an amusement permit application from Glynis Hill Farm as well that's in your package. And I'd just like to point out one, uh, one error as well on the agenda. The 21 Feb 2023 meeting minutes should have been removed. Uh, they've been approved and replaced by 6 March. So we would add the 6 March 2023 meeting minutes on there. That was just an omission on, uh, that I missed. Okay. Nothing else? Uh, let me just quickly take a look. No, nope, the rest is round table. And I would just like to, before you go to public comment, introduce uh, Mr. Ned Swanberg, who is here to speak during the public comment period uh, regarding uh, the CRS, which there's a document in there that talks about the CRS when we were first awarded uh, that. And he has been very <laughs> helpful and um, very involved with us in uh, being able to achieve that. So just want to thank him on behalf of the town. He guided us through the process and helped us uh, quite a lot to be able to achieve those results. And again, just as a refresher, those, those results and the change in rating um, gives us a ability to pass on a reduced uh, flood insurance to our residents by achieving that. So that's just my little kickoff there. I'll get off my soapbox. Public comment? <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I'm Ned Swanberg, I'm the regional footing manager for Central Vermont and Berlin, and this is my uh, Hi. colleague. Uh, Stephanie Smith, I'm the State Hazard Mitigation Officer at Vermont Emergency Management, so I'm working with Vince on a property buyout, but I manage housing mitigation funding mostly to reduce flood risk in the state. So if you have other things you are interested in there, reach out to Vince and those sort of funding. <laughs> And uh, we have a plaque, and we just like to award that to the community and say thank you for your work in the community rating system. And uh, this acknowledges the community just has achieved a, a class seven. So that's a really big, that's the leader in the state. So that's excellent work. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, right. uh, good stuff. So can we uh, offer that to sure. the select board chair? Would that be good? Oh, Get a photo sure. and maybe the uh, town manager and oh. a photo. That would be wonderful. You can smile for this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, right. good. Oh, no. Come right over here. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Can I take Thank one with you in it? Oh, sure. Very nice. Couldn't have done it without you. Smile. There it is. It's yours. Thank you. 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 Thank I don't see anyone. Oh, we've got another caller right now. Maybe this might be them. And we lost them. So that is the one on uh, 
Route 12, Tim. I know you, uh, you wanted to talk about that one a little bit. The one at the bottom of Chandler Road. The old Wheeler house? Yep. So, we reached out to him a few times. We said the email didn't work and we found the number and nobody called back. Um, there's a few things going on there. I'm not sure if they want to pull the first driveway for the second driveway. And the larger concern of it all is in 2000, starting I think this year and continuing through next year, the state is doing a complete reproject of Route 12 from Northfield to Montpelier. And they have reached out to the towns and are going to drastically change that intersection that is no longer going to be the Y intersection anymore. That is going to come down the hill, sweep slight to the right, and come out in the middle of the radius. So it is going to be a left and right and not a yield and a ramp for people to run off and go speeding up the road. So that's going to change that whole area quite drastically. My best opinion is is that I believe that everything should kind of wait until the state gets their engineering and figure out what that intersection is going to look like. Um, before moving a bunch of stuff down there. So nobody knows if they're doing this to accommodate the new intersection or if they're mm. just doing it to... I know they, they spoke with me once while I was plowing that intersection. I don't care for the amount of snow that they get because they get some snow from Route 12 and then they get snow from Chandler Road. But that house has been there for a very long time. So I know Tom had talked to the, uh, the property owner and in, in your drawing you'll see a red line. That's where the existing drive is. They, they are going to eliminate that drive. Um, and they want to move it up to where the, the green um, section is higher up Chandler Road away from Route 12. That's their intent. They're going to cut some of those trees there as well, they said, um, for visibility reasons. They have a large row of cedars, but like where that green line is, there's two huge, uh, I think they're split leaf maples on the front lawn. So I'm assuming they're going to have to come out of there. Yep. I mean, that's their problem, but they'd have to put an 18 inch culvert in there and do all that stuff and then like I said the state's going to change that intersection completely. I and on the permit it indicates culverts. Is there discussion about more than one culvert? Uh, like I said I haven't been no. able to talk to these people. I've gone there twice after yeah. work and nobody's uh, been home. Again what I understand from talking with Tom because I reached out to him as well and, and wasn't able to, to reach them. When they're talking about the culverts they want to take out the existing culvert at the end of that drive. Make that one go away I guess. Um, and I'm put in a sure new cover there. So that's that was the understanding, but I, they may they may need to leave that culvert there. I would guess because that dumps into the little um, the little brook that runs by and then under Route 12 over to the Dog River. They had to ditch it. Yeah, and they'll have to ditch from the exist from the new culvert where they're putting in their new drive and do you uh, to that. Uh, that isn't right. very far from the road. To their garage, no. It will be able to thirty, 30 feet. Probably. About thirty feet, yeah. So give or take. Uh, no, they, it's not very far. Like that's what uh, I, I'm not grasping uh, the concept. Of. Yeah, I'm going to speculate a little bit. They are they're aware that the state's going to change that intersection, <clears throat> and that section is going to go away. Yeah. Right there. So they, I'm I'm going to just make an assumption that they're going to plan on using. That existing section of the or portion of that road at the end of their driveway. So you're saying, Tim, that where the Y is, they're going to take and have it go right through the island onto the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then come down and go between the two of them, kind of sweep to the right more of the center yeah. of the radius of the corner. So their address is Route 12, and actually, if they change their driveway, they're going to have to have a. They're going to have a change of change address. Yeah. So we changed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, it'd probably be safer for them doing this, right? I mean, dumping it right out on Route 12 or versus Chandler Road. 
however they do the intersection. Yeah. Like, so what's what's the downside of um, this happening? Yeah. At this point, I mean, they're going to spend money that they're not going to need to. But I don't. My biggest concern is is that there's a there's enough of a corner. If somebody's coming down Chandler Road and they drive out into the road, there's not going to be enough of the site visibility. There's going to have to be some serious tree removal on the uphill side. Like for that, yeah, they're, they need. Yeah, yeah they're going to have to do it. All, you know what I mean? It's not, because it's it's a cedar hedgerow that was planted there years ago. Those trees are 15, 20 feet tall, all the way up through well, there. Looking at some of this, and trees are on an adjacent property. They're not going to be able to remove those unless they get their permission because it's off the property line. The other thing, I just had a quick question. Have you been, is there like some minimum length of culvert that you guys have been requiring? Because you know how it is when people round in and crimp I them over. And don't, <coughs> don't believe there's a minimum length, there's a minimum size. size. Yeah, because a lot of times they, you pull in there, they start to round off and get most a people will put, round Most off. people will put a 20 foot culvert in because that's what you buy is a 20 yeah. foot section. In. I mean, everybody, you think, well, oh, 20 feet, that's quite a long. You put a driveway in, and there's it's nothing not left. Mm -hmm. It's usually yeah. 30 feet. Yeah. should be something that we look at for a minimum. They did include on the permit they wrote for safety. Construction of new driveway, eliminate old drive for safety. I think just... My, my thoughts on this for what it's worth to the board is um, if the board moves to, to approve this, I would just suggest with the contingency that we give Tim the opportunity and the landowners to talk together to make sure there's a clear understanding of what the state's doing and, and what will need to be met from the town perspective because unfortunately we, we've tried but he hasn't had that opportunity yet. And there's a lot going on as Tim said right here at this intersection with the state change we just want to make sure that they're not expecting something from the state um, that either we're not aware of or everything, including the culverts, is, is going to work from, from the town perspective. I mean, I think it can, right? There's, like I said, there's a lot going on. I think it can work. It's just, it's got to be clearly communicated by everybody, including the state at this point, uh, to a certain degree. I think I would feel better holding off on our approval until after that conversation's happened. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, I concur. And then the other thing is just making sure they're made, that maintaining the uh, site distance, that they've got the ability mm -hmm. to do that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right now, like, I've witnessed it. They come off Route 12 with a pretty good clip going up, and then they come down just as fast. Just as fast. And there's not a lot of leeway for visibility without some good tree removal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So motion to table. the table. So moved. Okay. What date? Um, what I will do if the board agrees is we'll continue to reach out to them and Tim can uh, can meet with them. If they reach an agreement I will I will put that in an email and a text to you since your email's not up to all the board members um, that we've reached an agreement and, and what those details are if the board so desires. But well, we can discuss it again at the next whatever after you. I I think so, but did they are again there some time constraint? Well, I think they wanted to get started on the work, right? They wanted to get the trees cut and, and start some preliminary work as soon as as soon as they could. Well, I mean, they can do that anyway. They yeah. just can't change the uh, entrance. They can't answer, to actually the... change the entrance. So. <clears throat> okay, uh, second on the motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, a. Uh, Masterino right of way permit due for approval. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We all do it. I pronounce that right. 
I'm acting agent for Massimiliano's okay. property. I'm going to be the builder. This is Mr. Dindo, by the way. Yes, Robert Dindo. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Brown <laughs> resident, of course. <laughs> you know this one. Turn the yeah. mirror light. Well. So, what so where, where is this on Brookfield? It's uh, right at the intersection of Mirror Lake and Brookfield on yep. the, that would be the west side. Yeah. It's a little brown house or six right there. So our dilemma is that we've, we're tearing down an existing uh, porch that faces east towards the road and we're building a new uh, living room with a, with a full found foundation up and the footprint is within inches of being the same footprint and uh, we need access to the site with machinery and we don't have it anywhere but off the town road and I have some pictures of where where that would take place right in this ditch and you can yeah. see the property in the background This is just temporary, though. Yeah, we... temporary. And then we fix it on the way out. We... Yeah. So I did you take a look at it? Yeah. I yeah. Don't know about that. Like, yeah. there's don't see there being a problem. You know what I mean? This is just a temporary access for them to be able to. Because there's what there's quite a bit of cedar around the back of that house. Like they would have to be. Removed. They got a septic and mound. Is that what's right on the back? Yeah. Of it? So we so. can't. Can't access it to drive the main driveway side. They got a septic tank, a pump station, and up back's the mound system. So the only spot. <laughs> yeah. And it and it's the the lay of the land lowers down quite nicely toward the road for our access without getting too extreme. How big a culvert were you going to put in? We for temporary. We talked about a twenty footer. I was thinking diameter. Oh, diameter. I don't know. Whatever, whatever the town recommends. It. It's it's a ditch right now, so I don't yeah. know exactly. It's not like it's a stream or a brook. Yeah, I know. Um, whatever you require. And this is just going in for the season or something, right? Yeah. Well, uh, just a duration of the heavy equipment and the foundation yep. concrete work, and then when we're done with all that and the machinery goes away, we put it back. Who's doing the dirt work? Uh, Vinny Cavino. Does so, he have a pipe himself? He said he, he, he has a pipe. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? 15, 15 to 18 inch right there for temporary is perfectly fine. The ditch only goes probably another 100 feet past where he's took his stream. Not much the, water flows in no, there. No, it's it kind of comes out of Doug's field there, but there's yeah. not a... It crosses the road underneath. There's not a lot of drastically flow of water there. We're a 15 or 18 inch pipe there, but... I would recommend a little longer than 20. I mean, that's pretty good, yeah. especially if he's going to be, you guys are going to be trying to back concrete trucks. In there. Yeah. 20. It's kind of tight. Like Dave was just saying, 20. Yeah, feet. yeah. Pretty, pretty tight when you're trying to back. So you're sure for a 30 there. foot. Uh, yeah, I would try to keep a 30 foot pipe okay. in there. Just okay. so that, 15 or 18? Yeah. Okay. Whatever he's got. You okay. know what I mean? If he's got bigger. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to keep it as small as possible so we can get fill over yeah. it without digging. I make the motion to approve the permit as um, presented to us by Robert Dixon tonight <coughs> for the Mastriano's lot on the east side of Brookfield <coughs> with the contingency that they use the 30 foot length instead of the 20 length that's included on the permit. I second the motion. We used to have a minimum 15 inch Diameter? Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Minimum 15. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tim, are you okay with the 15 inch? Yeah, yeah. 15, 15, 15, 15 you know, okay. I mean, that's more than ample for that little, 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 Motion carries. Okay. Green Mountain Power right away for a minute. I'm here with you guys on Zoom. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. 
had some tech technical difficulties signing on, but I'm here. Good. That happens. That's the one for the real. Anything on that one? Mm. Oh, see Wait. I seen that. I went and looked at the gate states. Okay. I spoke with Jace, Jason uh, probably two weeks ago, I think. Um, they're going all the way down through there doing putting signals on every railroad crossing down through there in Green Mountain Power, moving poles out to supply <coughs> them with their crossing signals. That one's, you know, I mean, they're just adding two poles just outside of the right of way. They put grade stakes in, you know, I mean, where they were going to put the poles, and I don't see no problem there. So, I take it he didn't want you to go up completely up the left hand side on the cross. Yeah, so I, I reached out and I never heard back from him. So I, I didn't know if that was okay. just a straight no, and I can try again. Um, but I didn't hear because I, I staked it both ways just in case to present it to them both ways, but I never heard back. So what he's talking about, you guys can look in that picture. They were proposing to stay all completely on one side of the road, but there's that one fir tree and a, maybe like a choke cherry tree there maybe, but it's mainly the one fir tree on that left-hand side, and they were going to run poles all the way up so they didn't have to cross the town road with wires. Um, but he reached out to the landowner and I guess they didn't get back to him. So and that's, I don't know if that's anything that we can do or not do. What, go over the tree? Well, they'd have to remove it. Right. <laughs> Whose land is this? George Gross's. Oh, the George yeah, okay. on the so farm. This, yeah, this is Yeah, Dog River Farm. Yeah. You didn't get a hold of George to see if he was. They be... tried to, they reached out to him and. Well, the only problem for us is, is when we try to spread gravel, the lines are in the way. Yeah. You know, due to the fact that it crosses the road twice. Trees um, are important for agriculture, just saying. Well, <laughs> one fir tree. Could, uh, somebody could take and frame the motions so that uh, it could be dependent on what they do with that fir tree, where the other grade, where the other pole would go, or pole number. Oh, no. I think it's uh, seven nine six three five seven. Yeah. Yeah. So you could take and if George wants, does has no complaints about taking that out. We can do it if they can take it out. If not. Be as picture. Now, see somebody form that motion. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a complicated one. Slow. I make the motion that we approve the Green Mountain Power Permit 23 017 as presented with the exception of being assured by conversation with George Gross, the property owner, um, that they, they can handle the issue with the fir tree if it's a fir tree or what have you, and um, otherwise I say we approve it. Your second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. There you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Chris. Yep. Appreciate you. Much. Take care. You, you too. too. Uh, special event amusement permit. Yeah, that's for Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's their uh, walk from uh, Blue Cross to Granger Road, Comstock Road, and back. I think did they, do, did they do this? I think it's a yearly, yeah, yeah, yearly, yearly, yearly walk. walk so. motion to accept the Blue Cross Blue Shield special event amusement permit application as presented. Second. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to remind you that there's one one additional amusement ordinance permit that was added on tonight for the Columbus Hill fundraiser. Similar similar to last year's. It's in your that's package. Up on, well. That's one up on Glennis? Yeah. Was there any incense or anything with that last year? No. Not at all. It's pretty quiet. I think it went, went reasonably well. Do you know how many attendees they wound up having? I do not. Well, okay. hear a motion on it? I'll make a motion to approve the special permit for the. I missed the name. Glennis Hill. Glennis Hill. Uh, that's presented. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, roadside mowing RFP. Yeah. There's a copy. It's a one pager in your, in your package. It's basically just to go out to bid for the roadside mowing this year. It's uh, exactly the same pretty much as last year's RFP with the dates changed. So like last year, do you think we got the minimum five foot? Most places, yeah. It's hard in some places because of the ditches split. So. Well, yeah, that's true. <coughs> or even when the bank got, you know, short, shoulder, ditch, bank. Yeah. And I think I noticed a lot of times they didn't get the bank. So, I spoke with him earlier today about maybe looking at alternating years between one to two passes on the dirt. So the one year it would just be the what we normally do, and the next year it would be two passes on the dirt, because the blacktop's two passes. Um, we, for the last three years, two years, we've rented a tractor ourselves and gone back and done some of the problematic areas that don't normally get done and we're trying to cut a, a lot of brush, so that would kind of slow the regrowth of the lake, so you would get more of the banks and the, the farther over the ditch side. Mm -hmm. um, and it might not even have to be an alternate year, it could be two years of single pass and one year of double, and then go another two year, you know what I mean? The only thing I'd say to that is probably if you're going to a single pass on a dirt road, you'd want to so somehow specify your intersections. Intersecting, you know, your intersection should have be, be mowed back much further. Because um, we have entertained the idea. We entertain the idea of possibly, you know, because I mean, it's not getting cheaper. No. Looking into possibly purchasing a used one or looking at doing problem is, is the rental companies they've gotten away from doing roadside renting roadside more so that sure. option's not there anymore to do the hard intersections and stuff like that um, but yeah you know what I mean it just might be one year that we we have to specify a little bit more to mow the intersections you know 15 feet. So there are three passes for 100 yards type stuff to alleviate some of that stuff. But What's it's hard. Doing? Nobody's doing it anymore <coughs> either. Like, there used to be a bunch of guys that used to do roadside mowing and now there's, there's not. You know what the estimated cost of a piece of equipment like that would run? Um, a good, good use one? This uh, sixty to eighty. 
the one that we rented last year was offered up for sale this spring for a hundred and forty but it only had like thirty eight hours on it, forty hours on the machine. That was a rental at first? Yeah. Yeah, it was brand new. They yeah. they bought it at the end of last year and then the company mm -hmm. it was um, Fairfields is the one that was doing all the rentals and they got um, the company that owns them has changed their patterns and are going away from like tractor rentals. They're still going to sell them. They'll sell the, I think they're diamond mowers is what they, they sell it as a, a tractor with a mower on it and everything else and then not. Typically, where does this typically land this bid? Just an average. I don't remember what last year was. I think last year was, year was like 65 ish. 6,500? Yeah, I think it was 6,500 for the summer, somewhere between 65 and 68, I believe. I'll, I can look it up and send it to you. And we don't have a start date or a finished by date? We don't. Normally he starts right, I think, right around the 4th of July or just after. It's pretty consecutive because the guy that's been doing it does Berlin, like does just about every town in central Vermont that don't own their own roadside mower. Uh, Sperrytown, Plainfield. Middlesex, Worcester, I think a couple other ones. Let me so you say he, he, so he's done he's done this several times, several years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. And also the only one that bids on it. Well last year he was the only one that bid on it. Um, yeah, we went we sent it out to four different four people. different people and nobody returned them. He was the only one that bid. It was interesting. Or that had the equipment as well. Because there's a couple of companies, Northern Vermont, that do the V Trans irons. Um, sent that to them, but I'm sure their plate's full. They nice. take a contract with the state. Comes down to the who has the equipment and the and the time now mm -hmm. is what it's coming to. Mm -hmm. Anything be added to the RFP? No, I think I'd like to see a little added mowing in the inter you know, at the intersections. Honestly. Do we want do we want to specify three passes for a hundred yards either side of the intersection? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds There's reasonable. gonna be quite a few places you won't get three passes. No, together. you won't, but um, you know, I mean there's places that you will and places you won't and we can add that. Trust me to add it, or do you want to see it at the next meeting? <laughs> Trust you to add it. Okay. So you change that and yep. get it out as soon as possible. Exactly. Anything else on this? Um, local options tax update? Yeah, I just wanted to give you some quick numbers. You know, we're still in the first quarter, working with uh, Raylene right now. Um, just to, to let you know that the, the uh, what they're seeing. Um, as of the, around the 4th of April, um, they'd had uh, a little over 23,000 hits on their ad, on their site that they've put out there, um, which means that's the number of people that have clicked on the ad to view it. It's 23,271. Um, if you want the demographics, the breakdown, they even have that. Uh, you know, how many were women between certain ages, men between certain ages, so 61% were women between the ages of 45 and 65, 31% were men between the ages of 30 and 45, 8% um, non-binary between 45 and 65. Um, the ads between that group also um, have been shared 646 times. Um, links to the town of Berlin, so residents from the town of Berlin or that were 
appeared as residents were a little over 3,000. So uh, it's getting getting well viewed. Um, the next steps um, going into the next quarter, um, we'll probably have a couple of, uh, we're looking for a couple of residents that are willing to maybe do a little uh, podcast uh, about it as well. I know that uh, Joe and Dave have both mentioned uh, if they're available, they would also represent the town in, in doing a, a podcast with them as well, again, to go to the next level. Um, so that'll be coming up in the next quarter here real soon. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be getting that setting up and I'll be reaching out um, to get that going. But at least, again, we've got some, some numbers to show that people are looking at it. Um, so it's, it's getting a little bit more exposure, which can't, can't hurt. Any questions on any of that? Nothing else? Um, yeah, Vince? Yes. Is, are they all Berlin residents? That's my only question. Uh, no. Of the 27,000, definitely not. Um, about 3,000 were Berlin residents. Okay. And 10 of them online. <laughs> okay. Um, Rachel, you're up. reach out to the senior center, the director, have her here for that. Well Any questions for Rachel on this? Well done. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Motion to approve payroll warrant 23-21 for payroll from March 26 to April 8th of this year, paid on April 12th, 2023, in the amount of $65,366.71, also payable warrant 23-G19, with checks 22869 to 22904, for payables in the amount of $41,587.93, and the March Reconciled Bank Statements for the General Fund, Sewer Water Checking Accounts, and the March General Journal Entries as well. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Chair, do you need a motion for the town meeting warrant? To accept it or I'm not or sure. Um, the thing there is, is it was requested by the voters, so we really don't have much say about it. But you can make the motion just to be safe. I move that we approve yeah. the warning 
for the May 23rd, 2023 special town meeting as prepared. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, approval of minutes for the March 6, 2023. I make the motion to approve the Monday, March 6, 2023 minutes with just one change, and that's on page two, um, near the end of the paragraph, just changing to Conti shared, he was okay, etc. It's just he. Other than that, um, I second. Mr. Chair, did we ever get clarification on how we go about approving these since we don't have a uh, quorum who was still on the board who was at that meeting? Yeah, I, I, I have submitted that to uh, the LCT as a you know municipal query. I'm waiting on the on the on the answer. I should have it any day now from them for that clarification. So it would make the March 6th and the, just the March 6th one. Yep, the first yeah. meeting. So I'll adjust my any, motion. From town clerk, any ideas? I am not, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to adjust my motion and say that we approve the Monday, March 6, 2023 minutes with that one change that I mentioned pending the notification that um, we are awaiting from BLCT. The definition of that, and okay. Vince, Vince can update us. Yep. Provided they say yes, then approval could go forward. Second? Second. Okay. All those in any further discussion on this? Could you not approve these just as written, though? Even though we didn't have As presented, yeah. As presented. Sure. But it would have to be of the members that were present. Right. Oh, well, well see, which, which there was only two. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, so, you know, even, I mean, actions of the board had to be by a majority of the board, not a majority present. Correct. So that we would need three votes either way, yeah. which we don't have who are present at that meeting. Now, I was at that meeting, but I was not a board member at that meeting. And I concur with the minutes as prepared. I just was not a board member at that meeting. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a legal yeah. technicality. Now, I, I would say on the development review board, we would approve these with no issues. but. See, I, I'm kind of wondering, also, I'll have to go through the Robert's rules, but if, if um, even two votes, when, when there's only three people here, two votes is a majority. But the authority of our board is the majority of the board, yeah. not the majority of the board president. Right. Being that we're a five-person right. board, a two-to-one vote would not pass. And so, Brad, it's just it's 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 not even two to one. It's the only two people. Well, uh, yeah, but but I'm but what I'm saying is, there's only three people here, and it was a two to one vote. Yeah. Even though more people voted for it, since it was not a majority of the board, yeah. it's not a Robert's Rules of order. It's, it's our charter or the yeah. state delegated authorities to us. It has to be a majority of the board, not a majority of the board present. Maybe we should drag Carl back. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll give him my stuff. I, mean, so yeah. I guess for, my, for clarity for myself, are you a tiebreaker? Yeah. Only. Okay. So, and but in this case, we're, we're not going to allow him to vote. It's not a tie. I have it, I, he's not a tie. I get it. Yeah. So, we'll take and do it as stated. Let us know. Yeah, I'll, I'll get that answer, I'm sure. Yeah. From that. Okay, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one abstention. Um, 
approval minutes of uh, March 20th, 2023. I make the motion that we table the Monday, March 20th, 2023 minutes. Um, there's grammatical things and changes, but on page three at the bottom, there's a big part. Um, the it, there was the motion, it was seconded, the motion carried, and then it goes on to talk about the credit card limit, etc. Um, and so something needs to change there. So I just recommend that we table it, have those changes made, and bring it back to us at the next meeting. Uh, I have a second that. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Motion carries. Uh, minutes of April 3rd, 2023. I make the motion to approve the Monday, April 3rd, 2023 as presented with just a few grammaticals and on the very last page under the treasurer's discussion and the decision on moving to paychecks, there was one place where I was quoted as Smith asked about the difference is 188 times units, which is employees. I'd just like to see that clarified from the audio and adjusted um, to give a little more context to what that question was. I think others might ask as well. And I'll give Vince the minutes of each of these for review. Your second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table, Joe. Uh, I guess the only thing I would have to say is there's been, I've had a few calls on the, the traffic conditions on 302. I don't know if there's anyone else has got any. Um, you got a bridge project down there. Mm -hmm. Not so much, uh, I guess, the morning, but the evening traffic is back way up. Uh, I don't know if anyone's had it. We, we haven't had any calls here on it. I yeah. thought it was really pretty smooth. I went through there a couple times the other day, and okay. I was, was kind of impressed at the, the way it went. But yeah. it must yeah. be they're getting caught at the wrong time. Or well, I, I went to uh, uh, Price Chopper tonight. Going into Price Chopper, it was two lanes. Coming out of Price Chopper, it was one lane and the traffic was backed up in front of Price Chopper. Mm. So I think that's where it is, but I mean, you have to remember the, the, the car count on that road is phenomenal. And Do you remember what it was? It was something like 18,000? Yeah, but it, what people have to start doing is taking the uh, bypass, the access road up to the throughway. Because yeah. they can get, you know, go down and drop right in down the Berlin Hill and, in the Mount Pillar, or well, I actually forgot about it. And that's how I get caught in it. it. Went faster than I thought it was going. Well, I mean, when the when both lanes are open, it, the traffic is unimpeded, but yeah. there that equipment is working pretty close. But I think they close that one lane to, as a safety measure, and unfortunately, it does inconvenience people. But not much you can do about it. Hopefully, when the new bridge is in, it'll be an improvement. Anything else, Joe? No. Flo? The only thing that I had is I was going to ask um, Vince if he would describe, at the last board meeting, there was a slight discussion of the potential for some land in uh, West Berlin uh, for potential in the future of housing, if that were to happen. And it was in the paper, and there were people who expressed interest in knowing about where that was, a little more clarity. Yeah. I think that would be nice to have that discussion tonight I, so that people so I can know do it more. now. It's up to the board chair. I have that on my notes to talk about at the round table. And, uh, Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Um, Dave? Yeah, Tom's been asking about, asking me to bring it up to the board. He had presented an idea about fundraising for some, for like the rec department and the cemetery and some other departments. I guess he talked to Vince about it as well. And knowing that I was involved in some of these charity events earlier on, uh, they were 
Texas Hold'em tournaments. We just ran one for a, a gentleman with cancer, and uh, it was about a five-hour event, raised about a thousand dollars for the individual at the Canadian Club. Uh, and Tom asked if I'd be willing to help set set something up, if it was some at the board's pleasure to go forward. We try to raise some funds for the rec committee cemetery. I guess there's a list of things that we can do it, and under the state statutes, we can legally run four events a year for each each uh, department. Department. So uh, it's in the early time right now. I know that I've had a few clubs reach out to me. I got involved in that first one, and now they want to start doing them in the area. So uh, they're going to be doing one at the uh, VFW in East Barry on the 21st, I believe, of May, if anybody's interested in seeing how one of them events go. So uh, it's, it's early on. I don't really know, you know, what kind of framework, but, uh, you know, to do it for a municipality. But Tom, I guess Tom's looked into it. I have as well. I pulled the state gaming things. And I was kind of just waiting to see what happened in the state with the uh, sport betting thing to, to go forward with some of this thing because it was under the, the House was supposed to vote on it. I'm not sure. They, they felt it was going to pass. I reached out to our uh, Ann and, and Donahue and uh, Ken Gold's flat to find out if it did. And I haven't heard back yet. So, uh, you know, it's just something to be thinking about. <laughs> Anything else? Well done. That's door? Uh, nothing. Vince? <laughs> I do have a couple. Um, first, I'd like to um, talk about police shift coverage. The chief asked me to bring this up. He's going to have, even though he's, you know, we're fully staffed, we keep bragging about that. Um, he's going to have people away uh, this summer for an extended period of time for uh, military service and FMLA. And he um, is asking for the board's approval to consider carrying over some vacation for those people that, that will be working the overtime to cover those people being gone um, in case they are able to use you know, their, their allocation of vacation to allow them to carry over 60 hours. So that's, that's the first one. So, um, the leave time, how much can they uh, accrue and then how I'd much to, can they carry over? I'd have to look at the new contract in the handbook. I don't recall okay. what we negotiated. Do you, Diane? Not, not, no, no. Normally in the past, I think they could carry over 40, 40. hours for yeah. vacation. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the question. I, I know it's 40 hours um, in the past, so they're asking to carry over an additional 20 hours. Well... If you want to take and clarify it with the, with the uh, contract, we can what they accumulate. Yeah, yeah. We can I can vote on this that. On, and they put it on the agenda for next meeting. Okay. So if they carry it over, um, when the other officers return, when when are they going to be expected to maybe use it up? I mean, how long are they going to carry it over? Until they get a Increase the pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I think the expectation, and I'll clarify that with the chief as well, is just to carry it over for the following year, those 60 hours into the following year. Is this carry based on July 1st? Yeah, fiscal year. That it? That was that's it on that one. No, but I have. I think there's there's more. <laughs> um. Another reminder, on Wednesday of this week, the 19th at 10 a.m., um, anyone that wants to come to the Riverton Fire Station, we're meeting with CV Fiber to uh, understand what their proposal is that they want to put in over there for a, a, a station, basically. What's that going to be, like a booster, signal booster? Uh, I think it's, a, it's almost, I'm trying to remember, you know the little, uh, like the green telephone boxes that you see sitting on cement pads? It's going to be something of that nature yep. for them. Distribution yep. type of box, I guess is the best word. 
for that. So what, fiber optic is out. That's what yep. fiber optic is. Yep. So that's, that's Wednesday at 10 a.m. at the Riverton Fire Station. Anyone that would, they've invited the board. Anyone that wants to come and I'll be over there um, as well. Um, the Route 12 bridge. So Friday morning, I had a conversation with uh, the state um, regarding the bridge. Um, long story short, it's going to be very expensive for the town if we even want to consider it at this point. Um, there's some steel that we'd be responsible to replace. Uh, there's lead paint that we'd be responsible to remove from the bridge, along with the storage and transportation. Uh, the state would contribute only up to the amount of the demolition of the bridge um, towards the cost of that. So I think it's going to be pretty cost prohibitive uh, for us to do that um, for the bridge itself. Uh, I have talked with the Conservation Commission. Uh, it wasn't in the deeds. Uh, but it is conserved property, so the housing is out of the wind, out of the picture at this time. Um, there's some significant uh, uh, vernal pools and things in that area. Um, however, uh, I am on the next Conservation Commission meeting agenda to have further discussion about access to that area. Because basically right now, people are going there for, for the walk through the vernal pools, to use the swimming hole that's over there, and they're doing it in not so much safe manner by walking down through the railroad tracks and the right of way and such. Um, so we want to explore opportunities how to get access over there safely, which is, again, a bridge that from Route 12 is, is one means, and you don't have to cross the railroad tracks, but in the deed paperwork, there is a, an old right of way off from Chandler Road as well that we haven't set eyes on yet. Um, along the brook um, over there near West Hill Haskins. where it crosses yeah so we want to we want to lay eyes on that and have a look and see if that's something that can be resurrected for back lack of a better term um, which includes the way it looks in the deed it includes the railroad crossing an old railroad crossing that may be in there as well um, so that's the status of that Thank you. and and what we're looking at so it's it's not a dead issue yet but we look it is for the housing um, but we're still looking at getting good act, good safe access mm -hmm. to that to that part of a call it a recreational area. Thank you for that update. Any way that you can update the deed to show that that is a conserved land? Uh, I'm that's part of the conversation with the conservation commission, right? They were originally going to try to do something with Vermont Land Trust, but at the time uh, when that was being done and the property moving. Uh, over it was cost prohibitive to them is what I understand now so um, we need to find a way to to get that documented one way or another um, as well to your point and the last one that I have is there's paperwork like this in your package that just needs your signatures on it it's for the um, uh, highway grant that we get every year or try to get every year I should say for your resurfacing the airport road grant. Did you want to say anything about the health insurance increase? Yep. No. Yeah. No. Uh, just no, okay. Tim. Yes. On that highway grant, has we has there been any roads added? Class two roads added to the grant or just added? Uh, to the town that you're taking care of now? No. no. No class I mean, twos. Not any more than what we've had in the years past. No. Everybody told me about it. Mm -hmm. Did we add Walker Road when we had you plow it? Was it Walker Road or um, not Walker? Uh, down to Josh Walker's. Josh Walker's house. Black Road. Black, Black, Black Road. Road. Right. It'd be class three. Okay. Not two. Again, if you could just please sign that so I can, I can get that back to the state. What are we going to do to make it so these, that in the future, people put in culverts would make it like a 30 foot length? Is there something we can do? revise the requirement? I mean, we require it 18 inch, we can require it to be 18 and 30 feet long. I think, I think it's a good idea because uh, it, just driving around and hitting some of these places, I, I've gone places and you're seeing their There's no requirement for length. Because if they 
have a truck come. I'm seeing more and more of the ends oh, yeah. kinked over and they're not getting full access. And if it's a flood, so the biggest problem it's just, is the price of the culverts. Well, Three times the price it was 10 years ago. Yeah. So yeah. people aren't. They don't want so, to put that extra 10 feet yeah. on. but And then the two connectors, if they cut it in half, you know, to do it. But I think it just makes sense in the long run because if you get a lot of rain, stuff washes down. Next thing you know, you're washing culverts out. Just, I, I do have one last thing. Just, just to mention for for the board's information, and Diane shared this with me this afternoon, was that the uh, the tw she got the 23, 2023 health insurance. There's been a, a, a 3.9 percent for a single person family, and a 5.7 percent increase for a two person family. So that's a lot lower than I was predicting. I was predicting seven percent, so it came in a much better. Good news. Good news. Going back to the length of culvert that you were talking about, could you address that if you had like a minimum slope from driveway to bottom of the ditch where the culverts come in? Or a match. Yeah, specify that. Also, don't they have like a 16 foot bottle, 16 foot bottle that it comes into a 16 foot is what they plan, but then you by the time they're done and it bottlenecks out, they made up that 20 feet. And that's yeah. uh, are you, say what you, say what you said again. If you specify the, the slope allowed from the top of your driveway to the bottom of your ditch, you'd have your culverts coming in. And then that would, if that was a deep ditch, yeah. it'd be, a longer culvert. I see. So if I it's two you foot, know, yeah. you get away with a minimum. If it's three, eight foot, it's considerably larger. Yeah. Well, that's more of the diameter, right? The yeah. yeah. But the, you know, I mean, we can. You know, I mean, if we just put it in there at a minimum of thirty feet, and then it could be worded, you know, so it's depending on which scenario it is like yeah well because we'll, we've uh, had to change a few of them because they're on ledge so they can't get the depth to put an 18 in without hammering yeah, you know, I mean, so in some so some scenarios we've we've gone to a 15 instead of an 18 to yeah. try to compensate a little bit and help out you know, we'll, we'll look at the scenarios. policy because i think i think in the existing policy today <laughs> Um, the length is specified not to exceed, and I know it's less than 30 feet. Wow. I almost think it's 24 feet for a, a standard driveway, like Partridge Farm or whatever, right? If you put in a standard driveway, I think it's not to I think it's not to exceed 24 feet, but I'm not positive on that. But I, I'm sure there's a length specified in there, and it's time less I than 30 feet. Any time I developed a lot or something, I buy two culverts, cut them in half with the two yeah. connectors, and put half on the both ends. And yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a lot bigger. Yeah, I'll well, I'll take a look at it. I'll we'll go from there. Look at it with you. Is that it, then? Mm -hmm. That's it for me. Any executive session tonight? No, sir. Entertain a motion to adjourn. That's a motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.